May 2nd, 2021. Burien, Washington. It's a startling scene. A barefoot man runs across a gas station parking lot and frantically pleads with the clerk inside. The first thought I had, he's somebody on drugs, very high, running very fast. But then he takes a closer look. I saw this rope, his neck wrapped with a duct tape. I was shocked. He said, close the door, they will shoot me. I thought this guy is really in some trouble. It turns out his terrifying trouble began with a phone call an hour earlier, just after midnight. I was in bed when I got the call from a friend and a client of mine. And his dog was screaming in the background. He said, can you please come? So he's good to make it through the night. Than, who is using an alias for this story, owns a small pet grooming business, and he never hesitates to help an animal in pain. I thought it was an emergency situation. I said, I'll be there. He just rolls out of bed, but it doesn't matter. He's in a rush to help this dog. I went to go in and greet my friend. As soon as the door shut, someone came from behind me and punched me in the chest. I says, how you doing? I look at my friend and I say, what's going on? He's focused on scrubbing cheese out of a plate, not even bothered that this is happening. I see a woman walking at me with a knife and somebody else coming from behind the couch. He had a metal crowbar type device and rope. Fan is in shock. This is not real. This is like a movie. They had guns. So they got the crap beat out of me. An iron bar. I got hit in the back probably 15 times, hit behind my knees. I fell down. One of the suspects started kicking me in the ribs. These people are ruthless. Dan's incredibly outnumbered in this house. This is really, really bad. Everything is stacked against you. I'm pleading to the homeowner for help. My mind's spinning, what is this? And one of them starts asking me bank information. In the midst of all this violence, the motive becomes clear. These people are attempting to extort this man for his money. I was set up. Fan realizes his so-called friend must have tipped off these violent strangers to a business loan he just got. An SBA loan, about 45000 I talked to my friend about this loan. He was somebody that I just trusted. They tied me up with rope, reinforced with duct tape. I accepted that I may die. That's when Than's story becomes even crazier. Security cameras in the home show what happens next. I got duct tape and rope around my neck and my mouth. My feet were bound together. I couldn't walk. I was having a hard time swallowing. This is one of the most disturbing parts of this whole scene. You've got one guy leading, holding the rope. Stan, he's got rope around his waist, his hands, feet. He's hopping his way out the front porch. Stan may barely breathe because of the tape over his mouth. And the response he gets is terrifying. It doesn't really matter. You're going to be dead soon anyway. I was told that we were going to go somewhere up north. I would provide them with information. And once it was verified, they were going to kill me. I'm just thinking in my head, how do I get out of this? They put me in the back of my own vehicle on the driver's side of the back seat. And they had a pickup truck following us. As they drive off, Fan prays someone will see him. I was hoping or there might be a cop driving by and I can kick out a window and he's going to pull us over. And I was thinking, like, just please, just please be there. And there's no police. Then the car starts talking. The alarm went off. We had 90 seconds to pull over before the vehicle shuts down. Fan's car is equipped with a warning alarm that it's about to automatically shut down because the gas is too low. It sends his captors into a panic. They start freaking out. I have a gun put in my face. I'm thinking about my ex. I just wish I could give him a hug, tell my aunt I love her, tell my sister and brother, see you later. I believe with every ounce of who I am, I'm going to get murdered. 
Van's kidnapping has taken a turn for the worse. And with a gun at his head, he doesn't know what will happen next. Then the car turns off the road and stops. I'm told if I say a single word, I'll put a bullet in my head. I won't have the luxury of waiting where we're going to be killed. The driver tells the passenger to go get gas. And I think, OK, maybe I've got one more shot. Van's mind races as he comes up with a plan. While this guy's pumping gas, I'm thinking this is my last opportunity. The next place we're going, I'm dead. I would rather get shot in the back running, try to save my life, than just shot in the face. Fan has one critical advantage. This is his car, and he knows it well. When you lock and unlock this vehicle, if you keep pressure on the locking mechanism, it won't lock. I'm thinking, I'm tied up. I've got to get my foot free. To hold the locking mechanism with my toe, I tell the driver I'm having a cramp. But I have to lay down. I'm going to kick you in the back of your seat. I'm not doing anything, but I need to stretch my legs. The car is going to rock. What I was actually doing was rubbing my feet back and forth. I got my shoes off, and I was able to get one of my feet out of the binding. When the driver unlocks the car to let the other kidnapper back in, Fan makes his move. I stick my toe in between the door handle right when he started to sit down into the seat. I used my foot to kick the door open, and I ran. And the last thing I heard, shoot him. He's running. And I screamed, help me, help me. They're going to kill me. This has got to be a scene unlike anything anyone had seen ever at that gas station. I'm running. The rope is still coming out of the car. And I made it in the store. The clerk just had this, what is this look on his face? I said, Please help me. They're trying to murder me. I saw a rope, a long rope. I immediately reacted. I go to lock the door. He can tell this is a person in distress. And lucky for Than, he believes his story. He had dialed 911 for me. He gave me his phone, said, you don't let go of this until the police are here. He stood in front of that locked door in between me and these people. This attendant is confidently protecting himself, Than, and his store. Nobody's getting in here tonight. Fan's three captors linger outside. Then, suddenly, the black pickup truck drives right towards the convenience store. I'm yelling at the 911 operator, where are you? There are armed people that kidnapped you. Fan realizes Aaron is also in danger. I'm screaming at him, they're going to shoot me. Please hide. He said, no, talk to the phone. Instead of backing down, Aaron just leans in further. This guy is a total superhero in this really, really tough and terrifying moment. Aaron has had enough. I was so angry. I hit the door. He saw that I'm very angry. At the same time, I'm afraid. He's trying to intimidate this person away. He's not going to let him get to pain. The kidnappers hesitate, but then flee the scene before police arrive. They sent fire trucks, ambulances, and lots of people. There was a huge SWAT team response to where the kidnapping happened. At the scene of the attack, investigators recover surveillance video that shows the suspects came prepared. One of the suspects has an enormous amount of red rope in his arms. Another one has tape around her wrist. This was a premeditated situation. Three of the suspects are arrested within days, including the friend who lured Than to his home. A fourth, the one who beat Than, is later arrested in Nevada. The fifth suspect is elusive. Hello, I'm David Rose, and here's a look at some of our top cases. But after the video goes viral, free, free, free. US Marshals find him hiding out in Florida. I asked the detective, I need to know their plan for me. He goes, Than, I think they were going to kill you. All five suspects are charged with felony kidnapping and robbery in the first degree. Than is still stunned by the shocking betrayal. 
to know that somebody that I thought was a really close friend put a monetary value on my life really messes up my head.